Welcome to MLG Weekly, your home away from home for the most in-depth coverage of the world of competitive gaming. I'm Chris Puckett, and on this week's show, we go worldwide with highlights from MLG's Global Invitational. And we debut Julie Alexandria's new MLG Live show with an exclusive interview with Roy and Pistola from Team Instinct. Rounding out the lineup is another fact session, scope out, and fight to the death in our Game Battles Match of the Week. So get your popcorn ready, because MLG Weekly starts right now. First up was IEM Guangzhou, which featured some of the world's top StarCraft, Counter-Strike, and League of Legends competition. The biggest news coming out of the event was Idra's win in StarCraft 2. His victory marks the first win by a non-Korean player in a major tournament since Naniwa's win at MLG Dallas. Idra defeated Elfie in the finals to pocket the $6,500 first place prize. The League of Legends action featured a slew of teams from all over Europe, North America, and Asia. In the final showdown between Chinese Team World Elite and American CLG, the Chinese proved to be too hot to handle. World Elite lost the first game, but rallied back to win the best of three, three games to two. The Counter-Strike competition was taken by Swedish Team Fnatic, who took down Germany's Mouse Sports in the finals. While one battle raged in Asia, another was taking place in Europe at the Samsung European Championship. The French took home the gold in StarCraft II, with TOD's win over Nurcio in the finals. This close series ended in favor of TOD with a final map count of 3-2. Team again earned a decisive victory in the Counter-Strike tournament, defeating Navi, taking both sets 16-11 to win the $15,000 prize. The Electronic Sports Thailand Championship was the place to be if you were a Dota player. In the finals, the Thai team Neolution fell to the far superior Team Orange from Malaysia. While Neo managed to pick up a few early kills, Orange had a far better late game, which they rode to victory. And finally, we head back to the U.S. for the Devastation Tournament held in Arizona. Justin Wong was the big winner of the weekend, taking both the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and the Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition tournaments. He defeated Combo Fiend for the MVC crown and Latif for the Street Fighter 4 title. What do you get when you mix one part blood, two parts glory, and a whole bunch of dead bodies? Our Game Battles Match of the Week. Check out the highlights as Zero Logic looks for redemption in a 3v3 S&D matchup against AR Champs. Hey, what's up guys? It's Nexi. Let's destroy some objectives because it's the Game Battles Challenge. Yes, we're seeing the return of Zero Logic, and this week they're taking on the AR Champs. It's 3v3, search and destroy on Hanoi. Oh man, check out Create starting that round, picking up two kills in mid, but he's not done yet. Getting a bomb plant on the A bomb site, but no! AR Champs was ready for him, picking up the kill and winning the first round. It is now 1-0 in favor of AR. We got Sile in projector room. He doesn't need to zoom in, using the hip fire to clean up a kill in the projector room. Meanwhile, we got Zar off of AR Logic. He's gonna try to get a bomb plant down on the B bomb site, but no, Taze was there off of Zero Logic, exceptional communication, and we got Sile. He needs to clear off this B bomb site immediately, and that he does, picking up a kill on Taze. What is he going to do from here? He has to lock down this B bomb site. So he's going to jump into the window, check the doorway, but up oh, too late. And here we go. It is one to one, zero logic versus AR champs and ferocity. Yeah, putting points on the board, picking up a kill over by the Jeep, and he's getting shot in the back. What? He turns around while taking fire, picks up a kill on Zer. That was nasty. Now he's going to move right into mid. He must have got a call out because he's getting super aggressive. And no, Style was in the door. I got to see this again. Check this out. Zer putting shots. Ferocity whips around and picks up the kill, but he's not done. He moves into mid. Style tries to get a kill on him, but Ferocity is just on fire. Now here we go. Moving forward. It is two to one, and Ferocity is not done. Let's see if Zar can put an end to it. There we go. Zar finally cleaning up ferocities and that boy is just nasty it is two to one zero logic in the lead czar with the bomb he's peeking mid doesn't want to overextend and he falls back because his teammate is there he 
He's gonna get a bomb plant, my friends. 20 seconds on the clock and the bomb is going down. There's Braves right there to help him out, and they're simply gonna lock this one down. Two to two. We got Taze undercover from his teammates. He's gonna be planting the bomb, but Siles in position to nade the bomb site, but Create drops a grenade of his own. They're gonna trade kills there. Taze still planting the bomb. Braves jumps in the window and clears out the bomb site, and Zars chucking horrible grenades. He luckily checks mid and gets a kill on Ferocity. Good job. And last round was action-packed, but now we see some patience from Sile cooking a grenade and cleaning it up with his iron sights. He's going to end projector room. Now he's down in the spawn point, still being pretty patient. And with a drop shot, getting a nice kill there. And Zar, he's going to pick up the last kill of the round. It is now 4-2 to two in favor of AR champs. All right, it is now the seventh round of the game. We see Braves using the drop shot there. Zero Logic needs to do anything to get back into this one. You see the teamwork there was just too strong. Moving forward, Czar, he's chucking grenades. Picked up a kill over on Ferocities, and it looks like Ferocities was running in straight lines again. Czar picking up the easy kill. Meanwhile, we got Create. He's up in the high point. He has an advantage, son. Shooting down on Sills. Sills was trying to wrap around the corner there, get away from Create, but it was just too much for him. Now we got Create trying to plant the bomb, but time runs out. It is now five to two in favor of Ram, AR Champs. Now, if AR Champs wins the next round, this game is over. We got Create with the pre -nades. Does he hit anybody? Yes, he does. Siles must have walked right into that one. He didn't even see it coming. That sucks. Moving forward, we got Create. He's checking his back, picking up another kill on Zerf. And now we got Ferocity looking for the last member alive. And there he is. It is now job, five man. to three. But guess what? AR Champs is still winning this one. Now here we go, we got Zar entering projector and he's gonna pick up a kill. What are you guys watching in there? Watch out for that corridor, they must be watching Nexi plays. We got Create doing the drop shot over there on Sills. Now the bomb is down, Taze needs to pick it up and plant it so that he does. We got him moving over to the B bomb site and he's planting the bomb, baby. This could be it, two seconds left on the clock. No, the bomb gets planted. Nice work out of him, it is five to three. Is AR Logic gonna win this one? Braves picking up a kill on Taze, he's up high. Braves needs to wrap around to the bomb site, and everyone's leaving the game. You want to know why? Because AR Champs is this week's champion. Bomb deactivated. On this week's fact session, we ponder the great questions of the universe and bask in the glorious rays of JP and Chibi's illuminating wisdom. People, I'm Puckett, joined by Shibby. Welcome to the show. And Thank JP. You. How you doing, JP? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing in New York, Shibby? Excelente, my friend. I just called you Shibby. I apologize. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's my name. Yeah, you're just talking to what Shibby. Talking about? If you want to address me later, I'll accept that, JP. But All right. I'm sorry. You guys sound the same. I'll just be honest. Anyways. All right. I'll take it. Let's jump into this one with a very controversial question to kick it off here. What do you guys view the flagship game of MLG right now, in the past and in years to come? Let's start off with in the past, because I think that's the easiest one. Halo. That's obvious. Halo 1. I mean, that's what started the yeah. company. Well, I, I think just the Halo franchise has been the flagship uh, game for our company the last five, six years that we've been doing live events, seven years even. Um, but this year, I think this is when it comes down to a, a controversial discussion here. What do you guys think is the current flagship game of MLG? Now, it's tough. I mean, coming from Halo, uh, StarCraft 2, I think you, you can't, can't deny it. Uh, I mean, I think everyone knows my answer already is StarCraft 2, I think, took over the main stage. We see uh, most of the resources being put into it now, and I think it's here to stay at least for a couple of years. Next question is for you, JP. This one okay. coming from MLG Proto. He wants to know, what changes would you like to see in the next StarCraft 2 patch? I think the game is, is okay right now. Uh, it really takes a long time until we can start to see the ramifications of a patch and what it does uh, after being implemented. So I don't know. <laughs> um, still, we still gotta have, uh, still gotta have the, the players play a little bit more. So if you have no suggestions for what changes need to happen right now, let me ask you about the current changes are made. Um, I'm a Protoss player. Recently, I've been having a lot of fun with Warp Prisms. We have Orlando yeah. coming up next weekend. Do you think that the Warp Prism buffs are gonna make that a much more used unit at our upcoming event? 
definitely. I mean, uh, already right now, just in some of these other tournaments going on, you're seeing a lot of uh, War Prism usage. And to be honest, I, I still think it's not used uh, enough. But there's so many things that it could be really used for. Uh, thinking back over at the Red Bull land that happened, I think, last weekend, uh, White Raw was using it in almost every single matchup. And some of the things he was doing was just was outside of the box. He was catching his opponent off guard. And he was playing really, really well just with the War Prism unit because he was playing with it before the patch. So I think that's one of the units that people are still learning things about. So we'll have to see um, really as the game progresses forward what people are going to be doing with that. And I'm really looking forward to Orlando to really see the cream of the crop players uh, using some new units like the War Prism. Up next, we got Dale Walston. He wants to know, who is the Halo Reach team to watch at Orlando? My number one team that I'm gonna be watching is Believe the Hype. Snipe down, it said he played, I don't know, he's just found a new drive for the game. And you know, you're just gonna see Snipe down be the Snipe down you saw a couple years ago like when he first got on the pro circuit. So, uh, and Cloud, Cloud, he always performs at the tournaments. He's, he's a tournament player and you know what to expect out of him. Yeah. And Maniac, I think, is underrated. I believe the Hype was the best team on that West Coast land. I think they are definitely a team to watch. They are in Pool D for our next event in Orlando, and they're also going up against Dynasty in that same pool. Dynasty, of course, losing Snipe down in Cloud, but they gained Formal, and uh, th these guys are just gonna be going back and forth, I think, the whole way through. Believe the Hype, Dynasty are my two teams to watch from Pool D, uh, but overall for the tournament, you can't count out Instinct, as JP said, and Infamous, the guys who just won our last event. Ridiculous amount of raw talent on this team. Ridiculous! <laughs> so, guys, that is gonna do it for the fact. Uh, for JP and Chibi, I'm Chris Bucket. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned right here to MLG.TV for more awesome Halo Reach, StarCraft 2, Call of Duty, and any other game action you can think about. The Major League Gaming Global Invitational has assembled three separate player groups from Korea, North America, and Europe that will duke it out for a chance to represent their respective regions and a shot at the $5,000 first place prize. Check out the highlights from the second and third week's competition. The first four matches in the Korean bracket were played with all the favorites moving on in convincing fashion. In a rematch of the MLG Raleigh Finals, Bomber took down Coca 2-0 to move on to the winner semis. Next up for the Terran will be MVP in a battle of former MLG champs. MVP showed his TVT prowess with a 2-0 win over Ichi's Puma to advance. In the loser's bracket, Boxer and Hero were both swept 2-0 by MMA and Losira. This sets up a Columbus Finals rematch with each looking to earn a spot in the loser's semifinals. The North American bracket resumed with both winners and losers action. Idra was able to secure a spot in the winners finals, coming back to earn a 2-1 win over Chef, while Major moved on by beating Tyler in a relatively quick 2-0 series. As week three drew to a close, the European and Korean competitions were narrowed down to the winner's bracket finals, with both regions losing their first players from contention. The winner semis in the Korean bracket was full of amazing talent. Three former MLG champions, MMA, Bomber, and MVP, and an MLG runner-up, Losira, battled for the two remaining spots in the winner's bracket. In something of an upset, Bomber took two quick games off MVP to win their series 2-0 and secure his spot in the winner's finals. Bomber will get his chance to show his TBT prowess again when he meets MMA who took out Osira 2-1 in a rematch of the Columbus Finals. It's not been an easy time for Protoss, but their European representatives have brought their best to the MLG Global Invitational. Sase was able to take a quick 2-0 win from Thorzane to earn his spot in the winner's bracket finals, while fan favorite White Raw was able to advance, coming back to defeat Jinro 2-1 in a very tight matchup. After their stunning loss at the Pro Circuit event in Raleigh, Team Instinct was left to pick up the pieces and try to figure out what went oh so terribly wrong. On the premiere episode of her new MLG Live show, Julia Alexandria sits down for an exclusive with Roy and I Got Your Pistola. Hey everyone, welcome to Julie's show. I'm your host, Julie Alexandria, and this right here right now is my very first show. 
First up, you may know them as one half of the 2011 Columbus and Anaheim champion team Instinct. Please welcome Roy and Pistola. Guys, thank you so much for being on my first show. What's up? Thanks for having me. What's going on? Thanks for having me. The biggest story coming out of Raleigh was obviously your loss to Infamous in uh, Game 10 on Sunday. Now you guys were obviously really confident going into the tournament. You made it to the finals without a hitch. Friday went well, Saturday went well. Was there one moment during the Infamous series that you feel that you guys got derailed? I felt like we had you know, the series won the whole time. I I didn't really think we were going to lose. You know, I was fully confident going into that whole series. Uh, but we kept they kept squeaking out close games, and it was probably the closest series I've ever played at a tournament in my life. So it was never something really depressing, just so many close games, and the series was so close that it was just very disappointing to lose. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like uh, game five was a huge swing for them. Um, we It was a, a pretty much an even game throughout the whole Sanctuary TS game, mm -hmm. and they ended up getting a couple clutch kills at the end, and we lost by two. And so it extended the series and therefore gave them the advantage because they're up 3-2. Uh, I definitely felt like they uh, kind of swung the momentum in their favor after game five. So do you think that fatigue kind of played a role in that? Do you think you guys just got tired? I think we were expecting things to happen instead of making things happen. Mm -hmm. The whole series, especially the whole tournament. We were just too comfortable with each other. Instead of actually talking about what we want to do, we just expected it to happen, mm -hmm. which will not happen in the next two tournaments. We will not allow it ever again. Were you angry or were you sort of resolute to the fact that your three-peat had not happened? Uh, I'm one of the, the sorest losers that I know, so I definitely don't take losing very well. but. You gotta, you gotta man up and, and take the loss like a man. So I'll shake, I shook, shook all their hands and, and just kind of talked to a couple fans for a little bit as I made my way out. But definitely for the hour following uh, us losing, it wasn't the, the best mood I've ever been in, but uh, you just gotta, you gotta deal with it and, and move on. What role does Towie play after a tough break like that? Does he give you words of wisdom or does he try to pump you back up? Or what did he have to say about the loss? Uh, yeah, Towie's always going to be a motivator for us. Uh, he'll, he'll throw in his, his couple words of, of encouragement every time, and it definitely is helpful, but after after losing a, a tournament or getting knocked out of a tournament, for that matter, uh, there's not really anything that or anything that anybody can say to, to cheer you up. It just comes down to time. So did you guys even consider for a moment making any team changes after the loss? Not, not nope. once. Uh, I, I don't plan on changing rosters for, for a while. Uh, a second place for one is something you should never even consider making a team change. You were, you were the second best, and honestly, our series against Infamous, mad props to them for winning, but any of the games could have gone our way, and if they would have, we would have won. And so I never for one second even thought about changing teams. Other than Infamous, what other teams uh, pose a threat to you guys out there right now? Um, I think there's uh, probably like five or six teams that, that have the, the capability of winning the tournament. It comes down to who's playing well. Um, Dynasty, Believe the Hype, Status Quo, um, obviously Infamous, Warriors. Um, those teams right there, I think, definitely have, have the best shot at winning the tournament other than us. Nice. Believe the Hype and Dynasty are going to be a force to be reckoned with next tournament, I think. Everybody should watch out for them. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Good luck to you in Orlando. Thank you, Pistola. Thank you, Roy. This week, DMAC whips out his Xperia to give us his review of GameLoft Studios' new mobile game, 9mm. My name is DMAC, and today we get into another game created by GameLoft Studios. It's called 9mm, and it's time to get started. I gotta say, the graphics are fantastic, the gameplay is clean, and the soundtrack is excellent. In 9mm, you are the character John Luce Cannon, a rough cop who doesn't play by the book. The character is a and the single player is fun and challenging. The gameplay mechanics also feature the classic slow-mo bullet time action that was first introduced in Max Payne. Call me cheesy, but this really doesn't get old. The game is a third-person shooter, and as always, having a retractable gamepad on my Xperia Play definitely makes aiming much more comfortable. The on-screen slow-mo button is mapped to the left shoulder trigger and makes using that perk that much easier. After the single player, you're not quite done with 9mm. There are two different modes in multiplayer, your classic free-for-all and then of course, cops and gangsters, aka team deathmatch. There's a level system for multiplayer where you unlock upgrades and weapons as you level up. You can also unlock weapons from in-game currency 
which is either earned through story mode or through real money. I like to use the shotgun, pistols a little underbalanced, and the dual wielding of the submachine guns, yeah, that gets it done. Now that it's available for Android, it's expected by many to become one of the top games for smartphones. On top of the great multiplayer, make sure to check out the Xperia Mobile Gaming Arena that is also featured on Major League Gaming, where you can find competitive gaming action wherever you go. Check out MajorLeagueGaming.com slash mobile to join in on the action and win prizes. 9mm is an extremely well-rounded mobile game. The execution is great, which makes 9mm well worth the $6.99. Gameloft does a fantastic job of bringing console experiences to the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. Hey, what's up guys, it's Nexi. Now this week we're gonna play a game that my producer Anton suggested. It's called Catherine. It's a big old puzzle game and the storyline's pretty twisted. Basically, your hottie girlfriend's trying to get married, but then you meet another hottie and she's cool too. And that's when the nightmares begin and you go into puzzle mode and it gets ridiculous. Now I'm gonna give you guys a few relationship tips. Relationship tip number one, never spend money on a girl. So we're gonna go over to the Xbox Live Marketplace and download the demo for free let's check it out and here's where the action starts what's this dude doing with a pillow in his boxers he has horns whoa oh no this must be one of the nightmares all right so basically guys what you're gonna do is you're gonna be pulling blocks moving them around and you need to get to the top quick because everything underneath you is falling out of place let me show you how it's done I'm gonna climb I wasn't supposed to do that one. Look at these skills. I, I didn't even need to do that. I just did it anyway. Got the monies. Push this over here. Got the monies. Push that over there. Mo money, mo problems. Over here. Boom. Exit the doorway. Nice. I'm free. I survived. Snap out of it. I was daydreaming. Oh, she's hot. I love those glasses. Mm, looking like a librarian. Dewey Decimal me, baby. Relationship tip number two. If you order your girl some dessert, make sure she finishes it. Thanks, Bartista. Relationship tip number three. If your girl asks how long you've been together, look her straight in the eye and say, too long. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're at the bar, kicking it with my homies. Here's another relationship tip for you. Never get married. Uh. Yeah, we're comfortable. I like being the same old person every day and never making any progression, being a big fat loser crying to my friends about my relationship problem. This part of the game gets really interesting. Basically, your girlfriend's blowing up your phone with all these text messages while you're trying to get some peace and quiet at the bar, and it's your job to text her back. Oh, I got a new text message. It's from my girlfriend, Catherine. Like I said before, I'm having dinner with some old friends. It's surprising. Most of them are already married, and almost half of them have kids. Whatever. I gotta reply to this now. Sorry, can't think right now. Perfect. Here's another relationship tip for you. Girls already think all men are stupid, so when presented with a hard choice, just play dumb. Checking my phone for text, looking like I'm a busy guy. Good work. Whoa! Here's another relationship tip for you. If you got a girl back at home and you really care about her, and you got some other girl tramping up to the table looking all slutty, and she wants to sit next to you, just say no. Oh, I'm bugging out. Where am I? I was just at the bar. Now I'm laying in bed? Oh, snap! That's not my girlfriend!
And there you have it, that was the demo for Catherine. Now the puzzles in this game are pretty whatever, but the story is so twisted that you just might want to check it out. I'm Nexi and I'll see you next time. Well that's it for this week's episode. Join us next time on MLG Weekly when we bring you the most in-depth coverage of the world of competitive gaming.